Okay, please welcome. Yeah, so hello everyone. My name is Nikita. I work at IBM and today I would like to present you IBM Secure Execution for Core OS and OpenShift. So, before we start, let me ask you two questions. Please raise your hands if you are familiar with Core OS and Ignition. Okay, not everyone. And second, please raise your hands if you don't fully trust cloud providers. Yeah, so I have to explain about what Core OS and Ignition is. So Core OS is a small operating system. It's efficient, secure, and designed to run containers in cloud environment. And Ignition is a configuration tool for Core OS. It runs in init run of first time and takes care about system configuration. So you have your config, you give the config to Ignition, and after installation or provision, you have your own Core OS instance. So it's too used for configuration. Okay, what secure execution is? Maybe it's some kind of top secret place with one PC inside. No. Secure execution is hardware-based technology developed by IBM and it's available since Z15 or Linux 3 generation system. It's technology which fully isolates virtual machine memory and CPU state from hypervisor and other VMs. But why do we care about security and what kind of security we use on daily basis? Mostly everyone. So the most simple example is a phone. So a lot of people use touch ID or face ID. So even if phone is stolen, bad guy cannot unlock it and see our messages, photos or something like that. For similar reason, secure execution exists. It enables the notion of secure VM or confidential VM. So confidential VM is VM where you cannot see what's in runtime in memory of VM. Hypervisor don't have any access to it or it's blocked. Secure execution not only enables this notion, it also helps you to deploy your VM securely. So you don't trust your cloud provider, but you have your VM. So you can send it as a file and run it. Secure execution guarantees that your VM is unmodified or if so, it couldn't be executed. Also, it makes it possible to specify on which exact Z mainframes your VM can run. So now let me explain a bit how it works in general in any Linux distribution. So SUSE, Red Hat, Ubuntu. So during manufacturing, each mainframe becomes a pair of host keys. So here are three mainframes and private host key is stored somewhere in hardware. Firmware doesn't have access to it, it's only available by hardware. Public key is published on IBM website, so if you have serial number of mainframe, you can fetch corresponding key. Then we have a special tool called Yenprot image, which creates a unified kernel image. We call it SDBoot, it's here in blue color, so it's a file encrypted with one or several host keys, which contains kernel, init, runfs, and common sign. So once created, this file can be only decrypted on corresponding machine or machines and run only there. Any other Z cannot run it. Yeah, but is our VM now secure? Actually, not at all. We still have to encrypt the disk itself with lux encryption and there is a headache of system administration because every kernel update we have to run get prot image again create new sd boot and using the zipl tool which is ibm's bootloader you have to install this file onto disk we don't use grab we use zipl so there is a special tool which creates a mapping on a disk and you start directly on a disk so all I mentioned is good for security, but it's not ready for cloud because administration, lux encryption, a lot of handwork, it's not acceptable. So at IBM, we set three main goals for OpenShift and Core OS. First goal is security must work from the beginning. 
there should be no gap between your run UVM and you enable secure execution. Second, user experience shouldn't be different or shouldn't differ that much because if you have to read uh, 10 pages of manual how to enable it, it's, it's not good at all. So people are used to something, they don't want to see huge changes. And third goal was to protect ignition config. I'll get to it soon. So why ignition config is important? CoreOS image itself contains operating system, but without any user, nothing. So in ignition config, you usually specify your user, SSH keys, password, systemd units, actually a lot of stuff you can create. And it's your secret. We want to protect it. So in order to reach those goals, we modified building system of CoreOS. It's S390X only. On the left side, you can see how regular QCO image for S390 looks like of CoreOS. We have two partitions labeled boot and foot correspondingly. So slash boot contains what you usually have on the boot, kernel, BLS entries, and root. Root is just root. For secure execution, we added something more. First of all, VD1 red on that picture is a special small partition which contains just SD boot or unified kernel image. And this image is encrypted. Green partitions are exactly the same, no difference, but during the build we enable DM Verity option. Who knows what DM Verity is? Okay, so <laughs> DM Verity actually is a protection which calculates the hashes of partition, it splits it into blocks, calculates hash of each partition, stores it onto a file or to another partition, then it repeats, it calculates hashes of this partition and continues until it has just one hash. It's called root hash and we append both root hashes for boot and root to our SD boot image. So command line contains both hashes. It's like a Merkle tree or then we also want to protect, protect ignition. As I said, ignition shouldn't be readable by anyone and we also want to prevent modification. The easiest way to do it is just to encrypt ignition. So during build of CoreOS image, we also generate a pair of GPG keys. Private key we append to our encrypted SD boot image. So after any tram FS, we have GPG private key and then command line. Public key you can fetch on Red Hat OpenShift website, so each build of CoreOS contains its own unique GPG key. So two different builds have different keys. But we still have an issue how we boot our SD boot image because each mainframe has a unique key and if we don't have all the keys for all mainframes, we cannot run. For that purpose, we have a special key called Universal. It's a special key which is only accessible by IBM and a bit by Red Hat. So during the build, we use Universal key and sign our image and encrypt it using this key. This key you cannot find, you cannot fetch. Even I don't have access to it. So only built environment uses that key to sign SD boot with universal key so you can boot it on any mainframe. Ah, sorry, too fast. But we still lack lux protection. We still have no encryption for our partitions. So when user has its ignition, ignition supports feature called merging. So we enforce lux encryption. We wrote a small ignition config which stored in init RAMFS, and when system boots, first it checks Verity hashes. If they don't match, installation fails. Then we decrypt ignition. If it doesn't work again, installation fails. If everything is okay, all conditions are met, we merge user ignition config with our small, which creates two lux partition. We completely erase the file system of VM, and create bootfs and rootfs with lux encryption and integrity option on. All the keys we append to a SD boot image. So image is encrypted, 
Lux kits are there. Kits are random, so the same build of Core S image. If you run it on several times on different mainframes, twisting image it has different Lux kit. So on subsequent boot, boot system automatically decrypts both partitions, checks integrity, and if everything is okay, you have your Core S image with secure execution on, and that's it. I managed that we didn't want to change user experience, but unfortunately for security we had to pay a small price. User must provide his own host key. So he has to fetch the keys for his mainframes, or mainframes he's going to use in the cloud, specify them within ignition config with predefined paths, and that's it. We take care about re-encryption, about system updates, so every time system updates the kernel, we create new SD boot image, we append again lux keys, crypt up config, and that's it. You have security from the beginning in the cloud. And this is the first solution which is available for public usage. Before I end my presentation, I would like to thank people who helped me a lot during development. It was Red Hat team and IBM team, so without them it won't be possible to make this feature available. So with OpenShift 4.13, secure execution is available, so if you have access to IBM Cloud or you want to try, you can use secure execution and make sure that your config and your VM is protected against hypervisor or other VMs. Here are two links I appended because presentation is not that technical, but if you're interested in technical details, on IBM website there is a big article with a lot of technical details about how secure execution is designed, how SD boot image is generated, because it's not only two host keys, we also generate intermediate keys, symmetric keys, all the stuff. And if you're interested about how secure execution works specifically for CoreOS, on GitHub, an MD file where all the design is written with all explanation about why we use that or why we don't use something. So thank you for watching and if you have any questions, please ask and I'll try to answer them. Like more questions. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time.